Welcome to the Daily B Show with Matty B. Our special guest, Steve McMenamin, is joining us today. Episode 26. <laughs> I don't know how to count. So the point and the, and the purpose of the Daily B Show is to share amazing people with you guys who's going to help you be yourself and believe in yourself, express yourself openly and authentically and, and evolve consciously. Okay, and so we're going to get Stevie on today. We're going to have a good old chat. Um, and yeah, we're going to share some things about networking, collaborations, mindsets around teamwork and, and efficiency and effectiveness, um, and, and mindsets around abundance and, and lack of scarcity as well. So Steve's been a, a good friend of mine now for, ooh, when did we meet? I think it might have been about 20... Oh, I don't know, maybe 2015-ish? Three or four years? Um, yeah, but I'll wait for him to jump on. And can you guys just let me know if you can hear me okay? I know it's, it's a bit windy here at the moment. So just let me know if the wind's too much or if it's not too bad. Hey, Trev, Jody, Dill, love you guys. Bryce, good to see you. Thanks for jumping on. Hope you guys are having a good day. Um, so I was, I was checking out a few other interviews like um, Tom Bailey, I think that's how to say his name. Um, the Joe Rogan Show, a few other these guys, and it's really interesting to see how how these guys re- enter into their show, the people that they have on there, the the questioning techniques that they go through. Um, yeah, and, and I feel like I'm, I'm episode 26 on the Daily B already, and it's sort of just flowing really nicely. It's come come pretty naturally, and the people that we've been having on have have done an epic job to to share their stories, to share some value with you guys, to open up and. Um, share the authenticity and it's it's been such an effortless process it's been such a um, um, an easy transition into something which I didn't even realize was going to happen um, and the momentum that we're we're building is just phenomenal Stevie here we go let me get you on brother I'm going to add you there and you just accept that if you accept that that should work well today's it's Thursday today I believe Thursday yep Thursday today. I hope everyone's having a good start to the weekend. We all know that today's the first day of the weekend. Woo! Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, hey, mate. How are you, Matty? I'm very, very thanks good. How about yourself, show, brother? Mate. No, yeah, thanks cool, for joining. Mate. Cool, as. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely happy to be on, mate. Happy to be on. Give you a little wave. I was just, there. thank you. I was just telling people. Um, when did we meet? It was about 2015. When we were at that seminar? Uh, no, it wasn't even there. It was. Um, I would say it was not even two years, maybe two, not even two years ago. It was less. It feels like we've known each other for three or four years now. Um, I've only been with this company here for, um, what are we? It was around about July, 2016, maybe earlier, maybe February, February, 2016. Yes. Yeah. So it goes quick. Anyway. It does go very quick and testament. <laughs> yeah, very good, man. And that's testament to what we're about to get into. So, mate, for those that don't know you, um, been in the property industry mm-hmm. for over 20 years, you're an absolute um, professional networker and collaborator. And you want to share with people that, that haven't met you, if there's anyone out there that hasn't met you yet, um, who you are, what you do, and, and what you're trying to achieve moving into 2019. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, hey, guys. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on the show, Maddie. And I think um, we're talking about. Uh, effortless collaboration before and there's obviously a lot of stuff behind the scenes that's got us to this point but um, yeah for anyone that doesn't know me uh, born and bred in Trelogan which is I'm a Gippsland boy in Victorian uh, moved to Melbourne a few years ago now and I've been really passionate about um, self-development uh, property sales just helping people um, I guess inspire and really getting behind their dreams but um, yeah I've just really been into uh, I guess the last 18 months really into, I guess, internal um, examination. And that's really just instead of going to the external to get what I needed, I, I realized that I had everything that I needed to within. And it wasn't until, uh, I guess, that you and I met and crossed paths the day after something traumatic had happened in my life that um, I guess that was the start of that conversation. And here we are now, 18 months to two years later. Um, yeah, so yeah. I guess where I'm, uh, I'm heading now is uh, 2019 and really just trying to reevaluate where I wanted to be, what I want to do and set my compass. Um, and it's just, I don't think it's as important as it used to be. I, I do say it's important to have your, your peg in the sand and I'm such a firm believer in setting goals. 
but I'm also open at the moment to some, I guess, external forces coming in and collaborating with people and actually, uh, instead of just setting my own intention, setting a team's intention. So probably we might discuss a little bit about that today and not necessarily my, my drive as an individual, but even some of your audience on here listening, uh, working with those guys. Yeah, definitely. And so that is a really good point you make. And I actually did a video earlier today in respect to the importance of having goals and, and a vision to work towards, but then just keeping those peripheries open and having that, that wider perspective and understanding that while we are aiming for a certain goal and a certain target, there's actually a bigger, a bigger picture in play that is essentially working harmoniously with everything around us. Um, and, and I can see too, too much in the past for myself, and I see a lot of people as well, really fixated on a goal. And because they're so attached to that goal, they miss all these other opportunities that are being thrown at them as well. Um, so just, yeah, I think that's a new wave of, of awareness that's, that's sort of spreading as well is that ability and that understanding to really be open to allowing things to flow in. And, and it is a really loaded question when someone says, what are you up to and, and what are you going to do? Um, I ask it a lot, but, but even when I get asked, it's like, I don't even know where to start with that to tell you the truth. Because it could be anything and everything and, and nothing at the same time. Yeah, I think um, I think we you really cover there, and maybe what we need to, and this is why it's so important to collaborate, is having a three hundred and sixty degree view. Like I'm, I'm generally most people say they're laser focused, but what about if you're just pointing in the wrong direction? And as I said, opportunities are coming and going every day, and you don't have to grab everything that goes there. But over yeah. while you're looking to the left, there's something over here happening to the right. And you don't want to be zigzagging around, but I guess that's the life of an entrepreneur anyway. But um, yeah, what and what's been good though is now allowing myself to trust my my inner circle enough to say, what am I not seeing? Um, what is it that yeah. that you feel that I could be doing or doing better? Because generally, um, I mean, for myself, I reckon I'm pretty successful. But behind the scenes, I'm so hard on myself, um, like unbelievably hard. And people are like, oh, you got it really easy. I'm like, fuck, if you see the amount of work to make this sit here, <laughs> even just an yeah, example yeah. before setting this phone up, um, to just sit here calmly, <laughs> but uh, just to keep that cool. But I guess everybody has those challenges behind the scenes. Um, and it's really sometimes that for some people, that's the struggle of getting up in the morning and they go yeah. and face their day, what are they going through prior to setting up the morning? And I probably think we might talk about mornings as well. One of the major changes, I'm a little bit tired today, that I've done in the last, um, I guess, few days to a week is trying to flip my switch. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm generally a night owl and I'm like, well, I've got the most out of the night that I can. Like I've, mil I've milked that. And now I'm all about what does the daylight have to offer me? What can I get from the morning? Um, and yeah. so far, that has opened up so many more opportunities. And I can tell you that your mood is the first thing, is that the first thing that's enhanced. Uh, I'm not waking up at a, in the morning and then running to work. I'm, I'm getting up and owning yeah. the day for a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when I did have a job, um, and I would hate those mornings where I'd get up and need to go get up, get ready and go straight to work because it'd feel like my whole day was a work day. But if I got up even an hour or two before that, it would feel like I am owning my day. I get to go to work and do this job in the meantime, but it, I've got time there in the morning. So what's some of the things that you're starting to implement or that you have implemented in the mornings? For example, I've just started to get up at 4.30 um, and have cold showers in the morning and do a couple of reps. So this is, and I missed the last two mornings because I stayed up till 2 a.m. to do work as well. So mm -hmm. um, I sort of justify it by saying I got some shit done, but essentially I, I, I recognize that getting up that early, having those cold showers gives me that boost and does make you feel epic and gets you started. So what's some of the stuff that you, you find you're doing yeah. works well for you, even that you've heard? I think, you, I think you need to know why you're getting up for one. Like it's, if you've got nothing to do in the mornings, you just want to lay in bed. So uh, a couple of things I, I've had to do for myself because I'm not an early riser is I set uh, two alarms. So I've got a 5 a.m. and a 5.15. So that gives me, if I accidentally sabotage myself, I'm going to be done on the on this 5.15. Uh, yeah. From there, I generally get up and I have to physically get out of bed. Um, I can't lay in bed, play on my phone. Yeah. So I need to get yeah. up and I simply go. Uh, one of the things I am doing is I 
uh, not that I'm selling any products, but I've been taking this little ketone supplement um, and I'm taking them twice a day and I'm finding with a good glass of water and just a, and just smashing this thing down, my, yeah. my brain turns on for one, so I'm doing that. Yeah. The first thing I'm doing after that is I immediately do, uh, and I've already been a bit greedy here, but I've done my five things I'm grateful for, but I now do my five things I'm grateful for in the morning as well. Um, and that sets yeah, my cool. intention for the day. Um, I have yeah. a um, I have a bit of paper and pen sitting there waiting for me, um, and that I shared this with MC the other day. But I have um, three major challenges that I'm working on. Then I have mm -hmm. um, generally what my day ahead looks like, um, yeah. and then sometimes I just sit there in the quiet, and I can catch up with my uh, I put my headphones on, and I listen to either some music or generally at the moment it's motivational speeches. But I find as soon as I get that audio going, like own the day, be a beast, all this sort of shit, um, you, really, you really just get that energy flowing and you're up. Um, and then from there, I don't do any cold showers. I've tried that theory. They're, they're too cold. So, <laughs> so I, have a, I have a warm shower. So, mate. But, yeah, so intense. I know that's good for... I know, I know, I know. But anyway. It's colder uh, in Victoria. Than, oh, my God. So much colder in Victoria. There was at least the water's at least five degrees colder here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're like negative two at the moment. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, definitely. I started. That's where I started down there. It was like someone smacking you in the back with a icy towel or something. I don't know. It's, it's torture. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. I did do. Um, I did a uh, a book. I read a book which which is actually called Own the Day, and I was doing um cold shower for about four minutes, uh, and it's with thirty yeah. deep breaths. Now, uh, essentially, yeah. I think that's literally just trying to stay alive, but uh, those <laughs> breaths are pretty deep. <laughs> but I, I did do that, and I'm sure yeah. we all have these thoughts to ourselves, like, what the hell am I doing in a cold shower? But I tried it, and the the blood flow was amazing, and my, my, my brain afterwards it was it such is. a reward to get the, the hot water uh, back on. Yeah, It is. It really is. And and it's it's not until you actually look at the stats and the, and the like, the logical, rational reasons why um, and the, the impact it has on your, your biology and your physiology that mm -hmm. you can go, all right, I understand now logically, but even just experientially getting out of a cold shower, you are fucking pumped. Like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like because you've just stepped out of an Anthony Robbins concert, but it's just a cold shower for a couple of minutes. And mm -hmm. I did a video with um, Ryan Schroeder, who I'm doing the spiral experience with. And he, mm -hmm. he's actually the one that suggested doing it. So you get in, you usually do your warm shower and then take those 30, um, 30 breaths, do the breath work on your out breath. You hold it, get into the cold shower then because your body just wants to go, mm -hmm. but you've got to hold that out breath and not take that big in breath as long as you can. And then do a bit more breath work in the cold. But recently since I'm just getting straight into the cold shower now, I'm just doing it straight from mm -hmm. there, but it's, um, it is a, a pump up. It's a session. Um, yeah. So it's experience, but so tell me, um, with your, your, your getting your notepad and your pen and getting your priorities and, mm -hmm. and a few of the things mm -hmm. that you're doing throughout the day, is that in the morning specifically or do you go to bed or before you're into the bed, do you plan the next day as well? Uh, always, yeah. So I, I kind of got more of a routine. I know what to expect from my days without even necessarily planning it. So I know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Uh, I think one of the most, as I said, we talked about intentions, but... I need to, I try and keep myself accountable. I try and make a morning AM appointment. So by me okay. saying that I'll meet someone else, I know why I've got to get up the next day. So I try and set an yeah. 8.30 to a 9 AM appointment or a gym appointment uh, two to three days a week with an accountability partner at 7 AM. That also yeah. by, then I'm not only responsible to myself, but I'm responsible to that person. So that's made yeah. it much easier for me. Uh, but in terms yeah. of planning, I, I guess I'm planning my day every day uh, because I actually just literally work lists. I literally yeah. either write a list of things I need to do or if I really actually need to do anything. So I start with a blank piece of paper and I make up a task and I compl and as I complete the task, I'm writing it down. I actually find I achieve yeah. twice as much that way. If I start with a list of things yeah. to do, I can easily skip through to the easy things. If I write the, yeah. If I write it and say, do it now, do it good, do it just the way you should. No, anyway, um, what I do from there is I actually get more done. I could probably complete 15 to 20 items in a day, major tasks,
by working yeah. with a blank bit of paper. Um, yeah, other well, than that, not really, not really it. Yeah. So a couple of things that I hear um, you saying, and the reason why it works so freaking well, and I love it, is first one putting someone else into an appointment is that Pygmalion effect where you um, you essentially we we don't want to let someone else down, but we're more likely mm -hmm. to let ourselves down. That's why Easy. my experience and a lot of people's experience is they let themselves down if it's just on ourselves. Um, so I think that's a really, really smart thing to do. Um, and the other thing as well is the importance of a morning routine. Like we, this was actually a surprise that we jumped into this so heavily straight up. But mm -hmm. um, it was one of my, my mentors, Marshall Thurber, he shared this story about Edwards Deming who went to Japan after the World War, after they'd been mm -hmm. fucked up by, by the nukes and, and whatnot. And he helped them implement Deming systems, which was essentially... 10 year um, systems and strategy strategies systemizing every the, the industry and their government as much as possible and one of the things he mm -hmm. said that was about 90 percent of our results comes from the first 15 percent of our system and so if we extrapolate our day and want to get the most out of our day as a system that first 15 percent of our day is that morning part and what we do we look at that we stretch that out extrapolate that first 15 percent and we look at how the first 15 percent of that how can we get that absolutely spot on and bang on and I was speaking to a couple of people as well recently, and you can have these things you want to do, even if you just get to one or two or three of the things in your morning routines consistently, that's still a massive win moving forwards. And it's just about slowly implementing and implementing new and new things a little bit by little bit. But can you share, I guess, the, the process? Because um, I know that you've, you've had a background and a story yourself and as, as of I, right? So we haven't always been this efficient, um, effective machines that we are today. But talk to me about the, that process of, because I know there's a lot of people that don't have a morning routine at all. There's some people that are freaks mm -hmm. and there's everyone in between. So talk about the, that process of really allowing yourself to, to go through it and not be too harsh on yourself when you're not spot on every day. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the, the process really would be, the, the, it's the simplest advice that I would give anybody watching this, quite honestly, is just find someone else that's doing the morning routine. So I'm going to encourage anybody that's listening to this, don't speak to the night owls because they'll tell you, I hustle through the night. And I would tell you that all day long. But I would just say aligning with people. So you and I having this conversation is not through any intent. But think about, um, I guess, necessarily the wins that you could have. So the three wins that I've had in the last few days is by putting myself out there and making myself accountable this morning, I've gone to an event at 7.30 in the morning, which meant I had to be up at 5.30. The first thing I had to do was make a decision that I'm going to sleep earlier. That's my first process. Go to bed earlier, hour earlier. The second thing I had to do yeah. was, um, was literally I um, turned up there this morning and someone said to be 7.30. I'm generally running five to 10 minutes late to most things. And I went, I wonder what it would feel like if I was the first person there. And then people come to me. Now, what I want to share with somebody today, or these people listening, is I arrived at this event this morning and I was the fourth person there. So I was pretty happy and yeah. three of the other people were the owners. From there, every person that came in the door introduced themselves to me like I was part of the uh, there. So I actually met mm. twice as many people. So you've just the yeah. process would be think about the wins, not the losses. Uh, and, and now how hey, you're the leader and you're in control of your own time. Generally, time um, can be a really bad master. If you're the master of yeah. your time, that's certainly it. You've got two switches there. Um, yeah. Other than that, I would just say uh, some people maybe I'm a handwritten sort of person. I like to write things down. Uh, I yeah. leave myself like um, little notes everywhere, I guess. Um, even if I don't want to forget something, I'll pull a chair out and I'll put the book that I need to pack in the car in front of my walkway. <laughs> so I can't forget stuff. Yeah. So I, I literally leave myself some mental markers. So I'm going to say, yeah, cool. um, whatever that process for anybody, leave yourself a marker to remind yourself to get into that habit. The reason I don't yeah. necessarily need to plan my mornings anymore is it's become habit. Um, so I, I've done it 30, 40 times, and then now it's just I know what to do. The, the key yeah. would be just start with two things that you want to do in the morning, whether that's a morning walk or your grateful journal or cold or the cold shower, and then just slowly add an item in. Um, and you'll find it's like yeah. a little series of Chinese whispers before you know yeah. you've got six effective habits before you've even had yeah. breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. 
when I was first, first like really resistant to routine at all, like I had a coach and he's like, Matt, mm-hmm. just read one page of a book every day. Just do that. Just find mm-hmm. something so simple that you need to literally pull your hair out to try and fail. Like that you need mm-hmm. to go out of your way to fail at something that easy and just start with that. As soon as you've got one tiny little consistency, it will permeate and it'll, it'll catch on. Like I said, that's really cool. Of course. Um, I shall remember um, talking about controlling your time and not letting it control you as well. I used to um, same turn up late to everything and to work. And, and mm-hmm. so when I turned it around, I decided to come to work early and leave later and just, and make my own hours. So I wasn't, I wasn't working on anyone else's clock. I was working on my own. Um, and that sort of, mm-hmm. for me, allowed me to feel that like I was in control and I wasn't working for someone else or under anyone else or on someone else's watch. I was doing what I wanted to do the whole time and overperforming as well, which was, which is awesome. Um, so let's talk about networking and, and good segue into that for, for how we, um, you do get in and you do get to meet people like that. Mm-hmm. Talk yeah. to me about your mindset around collaborate around networking with people and the importance of that for you. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so networking. So there's probably my fate, one of my favorite subjects. So I would say that when you go and introduce yourself to somebody, the first of all, uh, don't introduce yourself as who you are and what you do. Ask them. Um, the question would be, who are you and what do you do? Let the, allow them to speak and you'll learn more. Um, I always feel that everybody has something in common. So we don't have to be as passionate about the subjects, but I like going to a networking event and thinking, can I meet pretty well everybody in the room or at least give the energy to them that I acknowledge that they're there. It's the, probably the nicest thing that you could do is walk into a room and smile and be aware that they're in your energy field and your presence. Because it's very, I would say it's almost rude if you go into a room, you only focus on two or three people. So I would yeah. say uh, it's important when you walk into a, um, I guess, a networking event that you always want to identify yourself with the person who's got the coffee, who's meeting and greeting you on the door. They're generally related to the owner of the company. They're, they're, so never dismiss the little guys in the room because they're probably the most important. You just don't see it. Secondly to that, um, get to know the owner, do a bit of breakfast background work before there, but also thank them on their event and help entertain their guests. So think of yourself at the networking event or whatever you're going to is not necessarily like that, but consider yourself a VIP guest. Can I help you carry this in? Can I help you with a coffee and, and offer your services there? You'll find just by giving that little bit of assistance, that person hosting the event is probably more nervous than the people there because they're like, I hope everybody turns up and hope that everything goes there. I commend them like, oh, thanks. It was a great job. And they're like, oh, this morning they gave me an example. They said, oh, these people didn't turn up and I feel bad about it. I'm like, do you know what? A a small intimate crowd is so much more passionate. It gave us a chance to talk. And they're like, oh, they see the wins in that. Um, With the networking events also is just think about how you can value add to somebody. Uh, What I try and do now, rather than connect, collect heaps of business cards, I initially say, hey, are you on LinkedIn? I grab them instead of Facebook and I connect with them on LinkedIn on the spot. And the real key thing to do would be to say, hey, could I grab a picture with you? The reason for it is you grab a picture and you say, hey, great to meet Matty Banks today at Yellow Brick Road. Highlight that picture. People want to see pictures of themselves on Facebook or LinkedIn or et cetera, also depending on privacy. But um, basically they like seeing that. It also helps them yeah. remember who you are because they'll put a name to your face. Um, And I can guarantee you 95% of those people in that room are not doing that. So be remembered, um, add value, have lots of energy when you go to these events. Just don't mope around the corner. I, even myself, who likes being on my phone, I try and keep my phone silent in my pocket, minimal calls, nothing. Um, It's rude if we're in a conversation like, hey, I'm going to need to, Jesus, I just knocked you. Um, Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. I'm just checking. <laughs> oh, mate, you know, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anybody listening to this, I absolutely freak <laughs> with technology. I don't like it. <laughs> as much as I say networking and all that, you want to know my fear? Being embarrassed on live 
Facebook. <laughs> That's my fear. I've had the last two worst robot voices. And then it's just done a backflip. That's going to look good. That's going to look good. Anyway, we're That's just doing stunts. Um, You're a natural, stunt. brother. Sorry, You're guys. Natural. Anyway, um, so what I was saying is, um, yeah, basically, uh, you connect with people on LinkedIn. Make sure you uh, connect with the people. Um, be first there if you can and also don't have to be last to leave. But thank the, thank the guests for having you. And, um, and just send out a couple of messages. You don't need to connect with everybody in the room. It's still important to shake their hands. Um, but really just go there and sometimes just enjoy the conversation. We're, we're all there to add value. And if you go there with not the intent to sell your business or your services, but just to enjoy it and if people want to know what you do, allow those conversations to happen rather than forcing it. Um, hey, oh, this is what I do This is, and doing that because we, we all have significance. And what I was saying there about answering the phones is we think that we're the most important person in the room half the time and our phone rings, but how many calls are they missing to talk to us? So yeah. I would say be present uh, as much as you can. And if you need yeah. to take a call or you need to do something like that, try and do that outside of the networking event so it doesn't look rude and it's just, hey, excuse me, you need to use a bathroom, go quickly make your call there. Um, and then, the, as I said, it just it, it, people judge you when you don't see it, but they're judging you on that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think for me, one of the things, and I'm going to ask you about this as well in a second, that allowed me to really open up to people in those sort of spaces was um, just being genuinely interested in them and that whole be interested instead of interesting. It's not our job to try and perform and, and be, like you said, the, the smartest, most important person in the room. But if you're interested in the people there, mm -hmm. um, first of all, like I noticed my insecurities wash away when I'm interested because I'm not thinking of myself, I'm thinking of them. Um, and there's a better energy that comes with that as well. But that sort of leads me into my next question is that what, because you and me are freaks when it comes to dealing with people and, and putting ourselves out there and, and networking and, and putting ourselves on the line, in, especially in social situations. Mm -hmm. But what, what advice do you have for people that aren't necessarily as, as inept and as um, equipped with um, balls of steel to just go in there and, um, and speak to a room full of people that might have some nerves about it and might not um, have quite got over those insecurities yet? What, what sort of tips would you give to those guys? Yeah, sure. So um, first of all, when you, before you arrive, I'm just going to imagine, I'm just going to say, don't take a deep breath and just say to yourself, it's going to be okay. I'm here to uh, meet five people today. Uh, so just connect with the five people. Secondly, if you can, sometimes take a friend. Um, ask if it's okay to bring someone else with you and work together and say, look, I'm going to work this part of the room. Would you mind coming over and helping me? Um, thirdly, from there, find so if you if you don't really want to do this, but I'd suggest to, is maybe find someone else in the room that also, also looks shy and quietly approach them. Um, you don't need to be the loudest person in the room. And there's going to be, um, and look at it as you're there to learn something from them. So just go to, the, go to that attitude. And it's okay to just be yourself. You don't have to be as you said perform. Maybe just go there and nod and listen um, and, and be that person. But if you, the, the, probably the easiest advice I'd give there is help the host. Offer before you get there, do you need me to bring anything? Do you want me to help? If you... The host will do all the work for you. Hey, this is Steve or this is Matt or this is, is whoever. Um, they will do all the, intro, the work for you. So probably the biggest thing, that's it. I'm going to call it help the host. That's, that would be my help key the point. Help the right. host. Now, Matty, I feel my phone's on 5%. Sorry, Facebook Live people. Uh, but what I want to say is if I feel I need to, I might need to unplug these headphones and hopefully we don't go robot voice. Um, but do you think that will happen? I think if you do, it'll um, it'll probably split an atom and the world may end. So you just want to be really I'm careful. I'm scared. I'm scared, but I'm just letting you know that I'm gonna I'm gonna. Well, this this is like this. The Daily B show is it's all it's ulterior um, and not as ulterior. But it's um, <laughs> it's alter ego is called the technical yeah. difficulty show. So don't worry about it, brother. We got this covered. Whatever whatever's gonna happen, we can deal with it. Right. So can I unplug and, if, and go for it or not? Because I, I don't want it. I don't want it uh, cutting out. Yeah. Do you want to try? Can I go for do you want to try now? Yeah. Go for the unplug. Okay. I might have an echo. Right. That's my only concern. But give it a go. Let's cross our fingers. Like see how we go. Okay. 
Can you see any comments on this? Because I can't see anything. I don't no, see. No, you can't see. Them. I can see them all. They're saying Steve is got... so gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey. Well, you know what? You know, you're, you're probably just a little bit better looking than me, maybe a little bit. But uh, I think we're doing okay. So between us, we might make a ten. So you can be the you be the six, <laughs> I'll be the four. <laughs> thank you. I'll I'm gonna it. try and unplug. Give me a sec, man. Okay, give me a sec. I'm scared. I'm scared. Anybody that knows me actually knows I actually don't like Facebook lives. <laughs> Give me a sec. Up until now, you haven't liked Facebook lives. After today, if they are friends, plug them back in. Plug them back in. Plug them back in. Plug them back in. Abort, abort. Abort, abort. Did you plug them in? Plug them in. You didn't plug them in. You didn't plug them in. You did. You did. No, they're not. No, they're not. It's not working. It's terrible. It's terrible. I can hear myself. All right. It's so fucking weird. It's so fucking weird. This is one voice. Sorry. <laughs> don't worry, don't brother. Worry, brother. <laughs> all right, let's, let's, do, let's, let's do. Let's do. We'll do a part two. We'll do a part two. All right. Two, so, all right. So this has been this awesome. This has been awesome. You go charge your phone. You go we'll catch up maybe we'll catch up mid maybe next week. Mid next week. Or towards yeah. the end of this or week. Towards the end of this week. I forget, I forget what day it is. I forget what day it is. Sure. All right, guys. Thank thanks you. for joining us. Guys, thanks for joining us. We'll catch up and finish this off in a couple of days. In a couple of days. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Love you all. Love you all. Bye.